short of Pyroland fireworks. How'd you catch the pyro bug, Joel? Oh my God! I don't know. I've, I've, I think I've always been fascinated with fireworks. I, uh, when I was 13 years old, I begged for a job at a fireworks stand and like started. I've been literally selling fireworks since I was a little kid. I always liked lighting them, and we'd done a lot of big shows. You know, got into fusing boards and doing stuff like that, like most people get into. And uh, at some point around 2012, 2013, we started actually making our own fireworks, and I was designing cakes and doing stuff like that in China and still hadn't really elevated as a, a shooter because, you know, we're busy selling them and doing stuff like that. So you don't get into that. So I joined our Northwest Pyrotechnic Club up here in Washington in hopes and asks of wanting to learn how to actually become a better shooter. I ended up getting my own Cobra mods and helping on lots of shows and doing lots of different setups and different shooters i'm still on that quest still trying to learn uh everything that i can uh, everywhere i go i'm just a uh, uh, marvel that so many people in this industry's work it's kind of like where i fell in love with with the sky wars event just blown away at some of these some of these people's skill and their their artistic styles and what you experience when you go down there and see all of these people's people's shows and work yeah it's uh, addictive right when you see something like that and you're like man that just inspires me i want to do something myself yeah you say i want to i want to do i want to do that someday right like i would love to do that someday i i kind of had that moment in 2020 it was my first sky wars and Mm -hmm. uh, it was right during the covid lockdown and all that and they still had the event and went down there and and literally fell in love with with all of that, I mean, I, I've been, to, I'd been to PGIs, I'd been to NFA, I've seen lots of big shows. You know, I, I, I've seen multiple shooters use um, my products out on big shows and stuff like that, and I love seeing that, like how creative they can be with, um, you know, like my kids. You know, it's, it's really cool. Yeah. yeah um, but and I left Skywars the first time and said I would so love to come back here and shoot a show here at this place and i literally cannot believe that i'm we're like 30 days away uh from literally you you making dreams come true and and getting to go out there and so we are so excited like for the opportunity and give my best to uh all these other people in the industry that inspired me um to become a better shooter we cannot wait to see what you come up with um i want to get a little bit of a scoop on like what your your show style is like, you know, what kind of, what's your ideal kind of choreography slash maybe soundtrack? Right. This soundtrack I worked on for, for quite a while, you know, it took me um, a really long time to figure out how to come to uh, certain ending points and things like that. It's, I probably have way more hours into the soundtrack than I do the actual scripting. You know, it's, f- it's a very, very important part. I mean, it enforces your choreography, right? Right. I mean, Once you have a perfect soundtrack, then it, sure. it seems to just all fall together. So what little teaser of your soundtrack, what are we going to be expecting? <sighs> it's real spacey, uh, uh, real, so real cool. spacey EDM style music. It's melodic and uh, upbeat at parts. Yeah, I think it's different. I guess different than I've ever really seen at some of these events, but still good. So it should sound really good on the sound system there at Sky Wars. It's that 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 is uh, another aspect of that event that is so cool. Is their their sound system is so great. I don't think I've ever heard anyone shoot over the sound system at Sky Wars like ever. Like oh, I watched Tim Jameson thrash the sky with salutes and finales, and yet you could still still hear the music, right? We we love we love strong speakers. That's definitely a must for Sky Wars. Yeah, we got a lot of pyro going up in the sky. Do you have any teasers for like the choreography? Of um, what you're planning? I am shooting a lot of uh, one three shells over our stuff, so that's going to be a little different than some of the shows maybe people have seen us shoot at PGI. It's going to be really cool. There's some really special shells out there that um, if, if everything goes right, it's going to be amazing. How big are we expecting? Um, all, all the way up to 12s. 
Awesome. Um, yeah, yeah, lots of tens and twelves and some amazing, some gorgeous stuff. I, I have some huge young fang tenant shells and stuff like that. They're going to be as pretty as our fireworks underneath it, so it's going to be rad. To see it come to life with everybody else there is going to be um, just an experience. I, I, I'm really excited. You mentioned before we started recording that we're going to be transported into another dimension. <sighs> Possibly so, yeah, yeah. As someone that is designing a show or trying to bring people into their mind or something right you're trying to bring people into um, how you see things and take them on a journey where at the end of it you feel like it was an experience i've seen some shows that just like can totally pull you emotionally and you're just like you're you come out of your chair at the end like wow are we even still alive this is amazing right and so i think at the end of it, if if you've designed something that makes somebody feel like they just went on a journey, that's good because you gave them an experience. Yeah, a really good pyro musical is basically like watching an awesome movie or just going on an adventure where you're, right. you're just transported, you're transfixed, and you're along for the ride along with you and every everyone else in the audience along for the ride that you've designed. Yeah, yeah. Real space-like uh, should be... Should... Let's get you a little bit more about your background. When did you join the Pyro Club that you're a part of? We're Northwest Pyrotechnics Association up here in Washington State, and I'm also a Mopyro member. I think I joined in 2014. It really had and, uh, had no clue. I would show up with bringing fireworks was easy for me, right? You know what I mean? Like, hey, guys, look, I have all this stuff. Come on. And, and then they're all hooking it up and, like... I, I really, you know, like learned splitting wires and like, why are we doing this? What is continuity? What is What is a series? What is a, I, have, I had no clue, but I wanted to know, I wanted to learn so bad. I was so excited when I finally bought my own gear, even though everyone was helping me set stuff up and they, they do it and I, I'd let people shoot it and I just watch and be like, wow, that's so amazing. But then I'd start to critique it like, wow, why didn't you do that, that and that or whatever. So I wanted my own gear so I could just show up to club events and like, Hey, Joel's over here setting up his own, his own little set, and and I'm I'm gonna try to do this. So it just, you know, it kind of just went from there. It felt really powerful, and it opened up new creative ways to to express myself. It was um, it's really cool. Anytime anyone is like, how do I become a pyrotechnician? Just join a club. That's what I always say. Find your local club that you are gonna learn so much and be able to ask so many questions and just mm -hmm. you know get hands-on opportunities to be able to, to work with fireworks in a safe manner, learn the technique and figure out what best, what equipment works for you, what doesn't, things like that and have those hands-on opportunities. It's invaluable. All right, we got it. We see the t-shirt. I see your, you know, nice full, my Shelving fireworks in the back yeah tell me tell me about pyroland it's, it's in my it's artists. yeah it's right off my office it's my little showroom in my office about pyroland we're like a small custom brand of fireworks we're like a small microbrewery of such i i design custom fireworks and 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 order stuff based on um visions in my head and uh, or things that I had seen that had inspired me to try to make a, a one four item look like that in the sky. We pride ourselves in new effects and, and really good colors and um, top quality products. And it's really fun to use in shows. It's real easy. We have a lot of um, solid color type stuff. It's uh, kind of like a prosumer type vibe, you could say. That's kind of what makes us different. It's really fun to design a show within our our regular brand, we got so much stuff that can keep you in color tones and you know, you could rock the sky blue for, for two, three minutes, just grabbing different consumer items we have that stay in those, uh, or a golden blue segment and just, and kill it. You don't have to go really t tearing cakes apart and stuff to, to stay pure. You can just fire yeah. through and um, everything's designed to be like, all right, next cake up. Your cake uh, and product selection and then uh, design process is really geared towards shows. I guess so, yeah, in my mind, right? I just think they, they should be pure. And then move into the next item, you know what I mean? Like, to me, a cake can't be, like, everything, you know? It's It really is what what drove me to start doing this. It, like I said, I've been selling fireworks forever. I was running my own fireworks stand when I um, was, like, 21, 22 years old, right? 
it go to lots of demos. I've seen it all. When someone told me that, you know, you can do anything, any color combination, any effect, any anything, and, and they're going to make that for you. And I was just blown away. And so I just started creating. I'm not sure exactly how many, but we've built quite an arsenal of products to, to use in shows and shoot. Yeah, arsenal is a good word for it. What, yeah. what year did you guys start? Pyroland started in 2010, and I think in... 2012 was the first year we imported stuff under um like the brand pyroland fireworks it's been an honor and it's fun uh and now that i'm all getting deeper into scripting shows and stuff like that i'm i am literally so thankful for all the stuff that i've made it is so fun to use putting shows together and then showing people not only like how they could use our fireworks but like how i see them in my mind and so shooting shows helps me express how i feel inside and show people like how i artistically hear music with fireworks and stuff like that so how long have you been producing displays you um, you mentioned, you know, you joined your club 2014, 2015. And I was blessed and have a couple of wedding venues that we shoot. You know, we shoot shows there all summer. You know, nothing huge like what we do, like, you know, at PGI or Winter Blast or something like that. But sure. I've got to get a lot of experience. Our, I'd say, you know, I've shot a lot of big shows up at some cas casinos and reservations here locally in Washington. We shot some really big shows up there. But probably our biggest stage we shot on or like events like the PGI or the WPA's Winter Blast in, in Arizona. That's been fun. We've mm -hmm. done that. I think Skywars will probably be the biggest stage that we ever shot on. And so I'm just thoroughly excited to come give it my best. It is a huge stage, too. I mean, I, PGI is pretty big as well. So is Winter Blast. But this one is like a, just the, a field. It's the biggest. It's, the, it's so large and you have so much room to play with all the effects and, and incorporating one three as well, which is going to be so oh exciting. God. I'm so excited. <laughs> I know. Oh my God. Like, oh, I can't wait. Oh my it. God. I cannot wait. When would you say was maybe your, the first pyro musical that you scripted and shot? Maybe like 20, 2015, 2016. Uh, some of the guys in the clubs that were teaching me um, how to do this, you know, we put, we used to put some scripts together and they'd work on it. I kind of help and work. probably like on my own. Literally on my own, the first like two music show that I ever personally scripted the entire thing was um, last year's PGI show was like entirely I did the I did the whole thing. Well, I still got people's advice and stuff, but uh, but did it all on my own. I love it. I uh, anywhere that you can go shoot with people that enjoy the fireworks like um, like we do it's a really fun experience because you know that that they appreciate it. I mean. I, I've shot at casinos where there's probably 30 to 50,000 people out in parking lots watching it. It, it just doesn't have the same vibe, right? They don't, yeah. They're they're not as impressed, you know what I mean? You could sky yeah. puke, you could sky puke, mix match hodgepodge, and they would be happy, you know what I mean? But this community is different, right? This community is different, and so to get to go share this and do these things with other pyros is the icing on the cake probably and it's going to be just amplified at sky wars because you've oh got God. a captive audience of ten thousand people i know i know i was just listening to a podcast they were talking about maybe next year it's going to get even bigger so they can house more people in there and um bigger shoot field and more people a bigger audience that is just i love what they do with it i love this event so much I, I'm also excited to be able to fit more on a field and see how the event is just going to expand because I think it's just going to continue to just blow up. Oh, yeah. No pun intended. Yeah. 2020 was your first time at Sky Wars. My first time. First too. time. Have you been every year since? Um. Yes. Yes. I'm, I wouldn't miss it. Have you done any like uh, participation, like helping on shows or maybe the blind pyro or anything like that? No. No. Uh, I tried getting recruited onto a blind pyro team, but... um. They already had it all squared away. Usually I am there just flat out enjoying this event, going around meeting people. There's nothing better than slapping that chair down in that right there and and literally taking on, you know, three hours of the best. And it, it, it's yeah. just, it, to me, the experience is so good. Uh, and I know that this year by coming and shooting, it's going to change the experience a little bit for me and be more work. Um, oriented. We try to do our best to make it so that we we have all day Saturday to be, you know, breathing.
Yeah, yeah. <laughs> for sure. And you're coming out from Washington, so that's quite right. a trek too. Yeah, generally, see, generally we just fly in, right? We'll we'll ship uh, right. do we'll ship the sense. donation stuff and whatever pre-sales down there. This year's gonna be a little different. We're gonna have to drive, and we just got back from PGI too, so we drove out there and drove back. So I feel like I'm home, like trying to get everything back in order, and then we're gonna be back on it. So. A lot. It's a never ending pyro adventure. So I have some questions that fans wrote in. Nathan Starr wants to know like how many queues you think you're gonna have in oh, God. the queue army. Okay. The Q army. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, so I don't know. I'm not as big on I'm not as big on queue count as some people are because like I said I use a lot of cakes. I mean Yeah, that's true. God Sam right. There's two different try. spots in my last song where I'm like queuing whole 20 shot red light district, so it's like towering red mines with uh, and comets and everything. It's just like brilliant red, right? But sometimes I'll match all of it and just bam, red light, right? We were adding it up, and I was like, well, yeah, that's 100, it's like 400, it's like five, six hundred cues. If you were, if I broke them all apart, but I don't yeah. really, I don't have to break my cakes apart. Right. I was telling Jordan, dude, imagine if we had to match all of those, dude, like. <laughs> You'd be there forever. Yeah, dude, I'm talking like, Monday, yeah, <laughs> run a five, four match series or something like way right. easier. It's totally I, different when you're working with mostly cakes too, because then I mean like that's not not nothing compared to shot count. You're gonna have right. Yeah, I'm not saying people should get on shot count, but I don't, I don't. My cues are, my cues are different, but um, I don't know. My my PGI show that I just did, it was like just a crumb over a thousand cues so to answer mm -hmm. nathan's question sorry to go on a rabbit trail there uh th i think it was over a thousand cues and i i'm currently not sure on my sky wars when i know it's more cues than that and i don't know but it, it might not be over 1500 i don't think okay i don't know so general estimate like thousand to 1500 i would say that's a pretty pretty badass show I maybe shoot a little bit more raw and heavy and trying to learn to be a little bit more graceful and use my comments and all my stuff a little bit better. And, and we all continue to get better as we stay oh, on yeah. this journey, right? So yeah, I'm not... Pyro is a, it's a, it's a practice, right? It's not... Right. And I also am for like, I want to express like what's in my mind, right? I don't want to feel like I, I want to shoot like somebody else's style. Hey, look, I hit a parabola bird just like this guy or something. Well, maybe that's not what you're feeling. What, what's, right. what's next? What's beyond the bird? You know what I mean? Show me that. Like, what else yeah. is there? Like, show me something new. What can you do? Like, like, what else do you see in your mind? Or are you just kicking that bird out to say, hey, I'm good too? You know what I mean? Yeah. Right? And so, like, I don't want to try to change how I see things just to be more like someone else. So everyone should do their own, right? Don't don't try to make your show like someone else's. Stick to your own style. Yeah. And it's the unlimited. So there's no, quite literally, no limits to or minimums on what Q count or how many cakes you have. You can do whatever right. you want. Right. Right. The sky is actually the limit unless I take people to space. And then <laughs> and we'll be... And then whatever we're capable of imagining in our minds when we see this show is the limit. Yeah, exactly. Rick Disler uh, wrote in, he wanted to know an estimated total cost of your pyro. The 1.4 oh pyro specifically. Okay. Okay, so... Um, God, I don't know. You know, and it's hard my, to, wife, how, how my wife always asks... My wife always asks me that same question. She always wants to know. You know uh, I I generally I generally wait until I'm all done with everything before I add it up. I don't have my prices in my yeah, on my finale sim like uh, and and intentionally as well because I never want like my cost to well unless I end up in one of these competitions where you have to count every bean. I I refuse to let myself be like limited on um you know it'd be like if you actually broke it down and realized you were spending three or four hundred dollars a month on starbucks you might stop going right exactly. if you're like you, you could have a <laughs> you could have that new car if you quit drinking coffee right like you it, it, i don't want to know i i part of me never yeah. wants to know but i do always have to go back and do it after the show to answer rick's question better uh i won't know until i'm actually done and i've loaded everything onto my remote like i yeah. said i shoot really raw and aggressive i just be like hey dude you just sent a whole case of those slices up i know i love that right wait till you see it right like i that's how i feel i have like a 
not unlimited, but I have access to a lot of really cool fireworks to shoot. So like, I, I don't. Yeah, your don't budget know. doesn't matter. It it's, doesn't it's, matter. it's 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 bad when you actually have like a fireworks addiction. It is bad. I mean. Me, uh, uh, I made these sparklers this year called World's Greatest Sparklers, and we will literally, me and my boys will go light, like a whole case of these down at a bonfire, like holding like who can have the biggest fire torches and stuff. Like I don't know. When it comes to to shooting fireworks or using them, I I, I generally try not to consider how much I've spent because um because they give me experiences and experiences create memories and and it's what are priceless. those worth. Right. So if an experience creates a memory, then what is that worth to you? You know what I mean? Right. They're priceless. Absolutely. And that's what I want to give people when I shoot shows is an experience, because if I do that, they're going to have a memory. And that's a yeah. gift. I think that's the best philosophy you can have when shooting shows. Leave them happier than they came. Leave them with something they'll never <laughs> forget. Right. In a good way. <laughs> Scott Shu wants to know how many Scott times... Scott Shu. Gonna... Hey, Scott. Hey, Scott. He's asking how many times you're going to fully dry run your show with, like, all the equipment you intend to use. Scott, I'm... A... I will run it until it's as dry as the Sahara Desert, okay? <laughs> and then I will drive down the Missouri. Yeah. <laughs> no, I fully believe in the dry run, and it will be... It'll be dry. dry. In the desert. <laughs> yeah, drier than the desert. Donnie Toms wants to know how many lifts you're going to bring. How many lifts? How many boom lifts? I'm not doing any boom lifts. I'm not doing any boom lifts. I'll leave that for all you other guys. All uh... Yeah, you're like, I don't need to imp <sighs> I don't need to impress the judges. This is the unlimited. I'm not trying to one up anybody. You're just <sighs> trying to make a really good show. I don't know. Donnie's boom lift was really cool because he was so high up in the air that you literally could differentiate it. I still get lost with some of the smaller ones. It's super creative and artistic and and I I so respect all, all the people that I've seen use them and do them and everything else. And I know to look for them in shows. I just, sometimes the lower ones, I really just don't see it. Was that like a mind kicking off or whatever? Like, I don't know. Yeah. But I, I don't. It, it, it could get lost exactly. if you don't know. We're looking for it. You know what I mean? So, yeah. you know, I think Donnie's were like 80 feet in the air. So you, you literally got that Malta feel, right? Where it's like up in the mm -hmm. air. But um, I don't know. I'm just, <laughs> it's not me. It's not me yet. You know what I mean? Maybe someday I'll, uh, uh, I'll have that ambition and be like, hey, I'm going to do that. Yeah, yeah, new and innovative stuff. Like I'm saying, it, it, that is, that is impressive. I love seeing that. I don't. I don't want to see where it's like, well, hey, you have to have five towers and six birds fly up or you didn't, you know, like, and then it, it, it changes it, right? It takes away from the creativity of each individual that, that sees stuff in their mind and then um, portrays it to us out there. Your individuality, absolutely. I, I guess so, yeah. Or like, it'd be like if the, you were a music artist and then you're changing your style to sound like somebody else and you don't want to do that, right? Yeah, Donnie, not everyone needs to bring lifts to be cool. <laughs> well, don't change your style for any reason other than, <laughs> hey, you want to try something cool. Sky Wars is all about your own perspective, your unique style and showing what you got. Okay, so a last question from the fans that I wanted to share was, uh, what do you think the proper pronunciation for these firework terms is? Is it peony or okay. peony? I usually say peony. Peony. Yeah, pink peony. Okay. I say peonies, yeah. I personally say peony, but like, I don't know. Yeah, right. I, I, I bet care. it's actually, I bet it actually is. This should be an easy one. Is it okay. gerbs or gerbs? Gerb? I go with a gerb. Yeah. yeah. Gerb. I don't gerb, actually yeah. know that I've heard anyone say gerb. I'm going to start doing it. <laughs> I think start doing it. Start I'm going to start doing it. Off. Yeah. I got 37 gerbs running across the front up there, dude. Watch <laughs> this. Well, half second gerbs. Half second gerbs, too, so don't blink, right? There they were. Did you see them? Oh my God. <laughs> what about girandola or girandola? No, it's definitely not the second one. It's uh, <laughs> <laughs> I call it a girandola. Girandola. Okay, different pronunciations. All right, now. I usually call it a girandola, but then sometimes girandola, because I know that's how most people pronounce it, is girandola, like with a uh -huh. J. But I used to call them girandolas. I don't know what what's up with that because Tom Conan, one of the pro am competitors. Oh, okay, guys, yeah. Like, is it 
Is it Girandola or Girandola? And he goes, I pronounce it Girandola. Oh, and God. I was like, Whoa, I've never uh, heard of that pronunciation it, before. It, it sounds French so or something. I don't know. Yeah. It sounds so fancy. Yeah. It sounds fancy. Yeah. I kind of liked it. It sounded like for, foreign, like, uh, like it. I mean, it is, I guess, but I don't know where it yeah. was. From honestly, but <laughs> yeah, there you go. I, know, I was like, Whoa, after thanks, it. Tom. We'll, we'll make a cake there and we're gonna put one right in the middle of it. We'll call it Girondola. Yeah, Gerondola. that's awesome. This is not a Girondola, it's not <laughs> this a Girondola, it's a Girondola. It's a yeah, you gotta thing. spell it with a J on the name so people read it right, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> Girondola, you got it. You gotta, yeah. um, the name of the cake needs to be how, like, they write out the pronunciation so that you yeah. sound it out. <laughs> so you sound it out, yeah, exactly. What What has been your favorite pyro show that you've shot to date? The favorite one that I've shot? I mean, probably not the best that I've shot. No, but, but your favorite. So last year, I get asked to shoot a fireworks show for this dude's birthday slash retirement party he is one of the djs down at a wedding venue where i shoot right he's also a local police officer here in our community okay. i thought that was pretty cool i was like i didn't know you were a cop he also is in a kiss cover band oh. literally full-fledged makeup the whole so i'm like oh my god dude so he's like i'll pay you like three times whatever she normally pays you dude if you do something cool i said i could probably do something and play some music to it with with it at the same time he's like oh yeah you just you know play some music during i was like yeah send me send me some stuff right and i'll see if i can put something together you can start when we shoot right not really explaining like we're gonna script it to the fireworks i put this whole soundtrack together of all this different kiss music and i did not really grow up listening to kiss but i put this pretty dope soundtrack together go to execute this show this party is just there must have been a thousand people there most of them dressed like there. there's some big hair nation band was playing and everyone's in in freaking spandex it looks like the 80s Okay, but the party started at eight and the fireworks were the start of the party, right? Instead of being oh, towards right. the end. Right. So they all come piling outside onto this, this, this back patio and we got the speakers all set up and everything and we start cranking. We shoot this show and I mean, you can hear them all singing. It was, it was just, it was amazing. We laid it down way more than expected. I mean, fireballs and everything at the end. When the fireballs went with the salutes at the end, the cheer and the, the applause and the screaming made all of the work worth it just in that, like, that 10 seconds. It was so cool. Dude came up and hugged me. He, like, it, it was, he was like, I've never seen anything like that in my life, you know? Like, that was probably the coolest show that I'd ever gone to because, like, I gave them an experience. And it, yeah. like, launched them into their evening where, like, he now has a memory of that, and that was cool to be able to give him that. Do you have a best show in mind that you've done? Maybe this year's PGI show. It was like a, a stretch on my creativity, and it was super fun to get to use a bunch of my new um, horse tails and stuff and be real slow and graceful, and um, it was fun. It was it was amazing to watch it come to life. There, you know, there's some parts like where I hadn't I hadn't actually done some of these sequences before. You know, like I got these really loud, quick quick red tail to salute cakes that are like four second, you know, in our pro line. And, oh, um, yeah. you know, the first time I ever saw one, I was like, Oh my God, it'd be, wouldn't it be amazing if it like walk like 20 of them across the field or something like, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, and, and uh, I got to do it. Right. It was, it was amazing. I got to, I, I, I actually got to do it there at PGI. So that was fun. I'm doing some of those, some of those thunder walks at sky wars too. So it should be pretty hey. cool. You'll get to see it there. Yeah. We cannot wait to see your unlimited show at Sky Wars. Joel, do you have anything else that you'd like to add or mention about Sky Wars or just you in general? We, Pyroland Super appreciates the Mo Pyro Club, how accepting and cool that they've been ever since we um, met them in 2020. And um, I'm super thankful to the Mo Pyro Club for actually asking us to come do this and um, I swear I'm not going to let you down. It's going to be sick. I believe it's going to be sick. Yeah.